Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And guys, thanks so much for being here with me today. I appreciate you taking the time out because we've got a great video. And I know I always say that, but this one is a really important one because I know this one concerns you a lot because I get questions about it virtually every day. And as why is my cholesterol going up if I'm on the keto diet? I didn't sign up for this. I signed up to take the keto diet or do the keto diet so that way I can lower my cholesterol, lower my risk for heart disease, and now it's going up. What's going on? Well, I'll tell you what, I know this concerns you because like I said, I get this question every single day, but I want to put you at ease. I want to let you know of the myths about cholesterol, some of the important things you need to know about cholesterol, and why cholesterol is just so important that if it does go up, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So please make sure you watch to the end of this video because I'm going to give you a lot of information at the very end. And also too, if you like what we're talking about, Please make sure you like, you share, comment, and of course, subscribe. And thanks so much for being with me today. But let's jump right in. First thing I want to say is I think the problem is so many of us are caught up in this myth that cholesterol is so bad. And it's been going on for decades. It's been going on since the Eisenhower administration when Ansel Keys did the six or seven, or however many country study you want to mention, because there's so many different ways it was looked at, where he looked at the countries all over Europe and all over the world and he looked at them to see which countries had higher risks of heart disease, what they were eating, and he basically fudged the data. I did a video on this that's really, really good uh, on cholesterol and what the myths are about cholesterol and is cholesterol really dangerous. So go back and watch that one because I think you'll get a lot of information, a lot more than I'm going to go into with this one because this one's going to be a little bit of a recap of it. But anyway, this really has gone full circle. We've known for decades that vilified cholesterol, that it was the most vilified substance in our diets. And so we've done everything we can to take it out. But I'm here to tell you that we've, like I said, come full circle. Remember these articles we saw cholesterol was bad? Then it was good, you know, maybe it's not so bad. Now they're telling you just eat fat, that, you know, it's been outright wrong, that the science was wrong, that it was totally fabricated, and actually fats are not what's making you sick. It's actually the processed refined carbs, which we all know. So this has uh, come full circle. Like I said, there's also lots of books out now and uh, really getting the message out of the myth of cholesterol, the con of cholesterol, that cholesterol really is so horrible for you that it's going to cause heart disease and you're going to die and your arteries are going to clog up when the reality couldn't be further from the truth. Cholesterol is absolutely necessary. In fact, what is cholesterol? Well, cholesterol basically is a waxy substance that is in our bodies. It's there abundantly. In fact, our liver makes about 80% of the cholesterol. So this is a very cherished, a very prized compound and substance within our bodies. It's used to make brain tissue. Your brain is about 60% cholesterol. It's used as an antioxidant. It's a repair substance. I mean, it's virtually everywhere. You need it to make vitamin D. You need it to make hormones. You need it to absorb vitamins A, D, E, and K, your fat-soluble vitamins. So this is not something that we should be eliminating. If anything, we should embrace it and have more of it. Because like I said, go back and watch the other video where I talked about the different types of cholesterol. And of course, the ones that you know about are LDL and HDL. And I know you think of it like one's the good one, one's the bad one. Well, I'm here to tell you that they're actually both good. Now, there is one that's a maybe not as good, but it's because of what we do to it. It's not because of the cholesterol in and of itself. It's what we do to it. First thing I want to mention, too, about these is HDL and LDL means high-density lipoprotein and low-density lipoprotein. It's not even cholesterol, all right, guys? It's not even cholesterol. It's a carrier molecule because cholesterol doesn't go through the bloodstream very easily, okay, because it's a fat. So fat needs to be bound to something so that way it can be transported around the bloodstream in the form of a low density lipoprotein or a high density lipoprotein. So HDL and LDL rarely aren't cholesterol. That's not what it is at all. So you can't even use that as a measurement. But we know HDL uh, cholesterol basically transports all the unused cholesterol in the body and takes it back. So it cleans out the arteries, it cleans out you know, different blood vessels, and it takes the unused cholesterol back to the body to be used. So it's taken to the tissue and cells and back to the liver to be recycled. It also removes cholesterol from the walls of the arteries. So everybody thinks, well, HDL is the good one, right? We want more of that. It keeps the highs high, we used to say in school. And the low is low. Well, here's the problem. LDL cholesterol isn't bad. It's actually very, very good. Why is it very good? Because this is the one you use to make hormones. So guys, if you want to make testosterone, 
You need LDL. Ladies, you want to make estrogen and progesterone and testosterone for yourself. You need LDL. Okay, so low density lipoprotein is used to make all your steroid hormones. It's also used to make cell membranes. This is the, a really, really important cholesterol and it's not bad at all. It's what we do to it and this is what I'm talking about. You see, when your liver makes cholesterol, once again, it makes about 80% of it. So a lot of us are worried about, you know, I don't want to take in too much dietary cholesterol because it's not going to be good for my arteries. I'm going to get heart disease. Your liver's making it. So don't worry about what you're eating. Your liver is going to make or just up or down according to your diet. So if you eat a lot more cholesterol, your liver makes less. If you eat less cholesterol, your liver is going to make more. So it's all kept in check by your liver. So your liver makes VLDL, which is very low density lipoproteins. And this can go one of two ways. You can either make it healthy by eating vegetables and organic foods, fruits, vegetables, things like that and make it healthy, meaning that what happens is the LDL particles actually stay fluffy above 25 nanometers. Now you don't need to know the numbers, just know this. The fluffy LDL particles are the ones you want. If you eat a lot of processed refined carbs, you're going to go this direction, which means you're going to make the very small, very dense LDL particles. So really, once again, LDL is not a bad thing. It's what you do to it. When you make it light and fluffy, you make it healthy, and you do that by eating a high-quality, healthy diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, and all the good things we talk about. If you add a lot of processed refined carbs, your breads, your rice, your pastas, your cereals, you make very small particles, low-density lipoproteins, small, dense ones, and those can get lodged in the artery, artery walls, the arterial walls. That's the problem. So why does the cholesterol rise anyway? Well, anytime you incorporate more fat in your diet, there's a good chance the cholesterol is going to go up. So what happens here? Well, about 20 to 30 percent of the people, when they go on a ketogenic diet, are going to experience a rise. And that's why I get the questions I do. A lot of you never think anything about it. Your cholesterol never goes up. But 20 to 30 percent of you will experience this. It's normal. It's OK. Don't worry about it so much because most of the time it's going to go back to normal levels within a month or two, maybe upwards of a year. But once again, it's going to go back to normal levels. So total cholesterol, anyway, if they do a test and measure total cholesterol, that's not really a good test anyway because it doesn't tell us anything about the percentage of LDL and HDL. And it also doesn't tell us the percentage of the VLDL, in other words, the really small particles under 25 nanometers compared to the bigger, fluffier LDL particles. So total cholesterol is not a good test. The one they typically use is called LDL-C, the most common test to assess serum levels of LDL particles. But once again, this is just an estimate too. So they're not really getting good quality numbers here to be able to adequately judge or measure your cholesterol levels. And then they get you all worked up and all scared because you know your cholesterol is high and then you buy into this whole myth that cholesterol is a problem. Once again, guys, cholesterol is actually very good for us. Now, the one you should be concerned about are triglycerides. These are the ones that are most closely linked and connected with heart disease. But what happens is once you start to lower your, your uh, carbohydrates, your body triggers the release of triglycerides because your body now needs another form of fuel, so it triggers the release of uh, triglycerides to be burned as a fuel source. Now, once again, this is typically temporary. So even if it does happen, and you happen to get measurements done around this time, and you say, Dr. Nick, my triglycerides are high, I understand. That's OK. It will go back down normally. Under normal conditions, it's going to go back down. So don't worry about it. What's another reason why you could have higher levels of cholesterol? Also, too, your body doesn't have the right enzymes yet. You don't have lipase made enough yet. So lipase is the enzyme that our body uses to break down fats so that way we can utilize them as fuel. Well, when you haven't had a lot of fats in your body, your body doesn't make adequate amounts of lipase, okay? It also doesn't make adequate amounts of bile. Some of you were concerned when you lose your gallbladder or have your gallbladder removed that, hey, can I still do the keto diet? And the answer is yes. You just have to give your liver time to ramp up its bile production. Okay, your liver is what makes bile, not your gallbladder. So even if you have your gallbladder taken out, it's really just a storage facility so that way you have bile on demand to help you 
emulsify and break down fats, but it's not what makes the bile. Your liver does. So give your body a chance to start ramping up these digestive enzymes, okay? So that's one of the reasons too. Give your body some time. Once you make adequate enzymes, your levels will start coming back down because you're not utilizing it. So your body says, you know what? Let's just dump it. We're not utilizing it. Let's just dump it and it measures high. That's why you get those tests. Next, another reason is because of illness, lack of sleep, or high stress. Any of those can cause release of triglycerides, can cause your cholesterol to look high. So guys, there's a lot of different reasons, but they're not all pathological, they're not all bad, and they're typically something that'll adjust right back into place once your body makes enough enzymes and your body gets used to fat for fuel. So hopefully this was great information for you. If so, you know what to do. Please make sure you like, you share, you comment, and subscribe. And hopefully you'll get this out to a lot of people who are concerned about their cholesterol. And now, hopefully you're not worried about it anymore either. And like I said, go back and watch that other video. You'll learn about why cholesterol is actually so important. It's very, very important. Anyway, this is Dr. Nick. Thanking you so much for supporting my channel. I love and appreciate you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.